Hi, everyone. Thank you for uh, joining our webinar today on shifting IT project funding conversations from technical implementation to business transformation. Um, before we begin diving into the content, uh, speaker introductions are in order, but again, our approach is to give you 30-minute high-impact uh, power webinars with some important information that we, we think you can uh, add value from, uh, take value from, and uh, apply to your business and your work today. So without further ado, I am uh, Susan Odell, Managing Partner and COO at RAPA. Uh, technology uh, for 20 years and really have been focused on strategic planning with customers and, uh, and organizations that I've been involved with. Broad base of uh, IT experience with a concentration in IT asset management and Microsoft technologies. Presenting with me today. Hi there. Uh, my name is uh, Pierre Paquette. Um, also with the RAPA, uh, we've, um, we've been involved in asset management for many years. I've been involved mainly on the software development side uh, within the ITAM space and even before that in other technologies. It, it, my time within asset management has been, uh, I think, divided at, you know, at this point about half and half in terms of developing technology solutions as well as providing services and helping clients get the most out of the, the technology that was developed. And, um, and working in that Microsoft space. Terrific. Okay, so we'll keep uh, going. And our style today is definitely Pierre and I having more of a, a conversation about concepts and uh, things that people really need to think about uh, in terms of these business practices. So uh, that's the conversation style that you'll uh, have and experience in this webinar today as we, as we move forward. Please do provide questions that you may have uh, within the question window that's available to you in your console, and we'll get to that at the end of, of the session. So to kick off, we want to talk about the IT iceberg, and you know, oftentimes we all love technology, and it's really easy to slip into a focus on on the tools themselves and the functionality and the new things that can be done through the technology. But we have to really work hard every day to think about IT as a much bigger entity than the tools that reside within it. So let's let's talk about that landscape and then how we can shift uh, where we approach IT projects from uh, and the, the positive impact that has not only on customers, but on all of us in terms of uh, vendors that, that help support them in their objectives. So everything really from our perspective and from the customer's perspective focuses on the business needs of the organization. What is IT doing? to serve the business, and what does IT have to do within its own organization to uh, be of service to the greater, greater organization. And this all stems from the CIO's office. Uh, and if we were to ask three questions, they're not long questions, but they're significant. Um, you know, what is our loaded cost of IT? Um, that's a big question. You know, how do you define uh, what the loaded cost of IT is? What are those factors that you want to track? How are you going to find the data related to those things that you want to track in terms of the cost of IT? And how are you going to manage it uh, ongoing? This isn't a one implementation kind of a question. It's how do you manage that ongoing? Uh, that's a big question. Uh, Pierre, the second question? Yes, uh, the second one is, you know, what should we be, what should we be showing back in terms of cost of IT and what should we ch be charging back for the use of that service or the use of that technology within an organization? And are we going to, you know, identify any uplift costs to cover uh, maybe costs that we were not aware of, or, or just realizing that there are some other costs that uh, that are that are accrued through the year that IT is is covering for, and want to reclaim that to uh, to to balance more or less, more or less the books within IT. Um, that's not always an easy case. Um, often we'll look at the cost of the asset. The initial cost of the asset, and you know, maybe amortize it over or three years or four years to come up with a cost. But there's a lot of other hidden costs that need to be identified, and and providing some information back to the user of that service of the is is good in terms of making them aware of what they're getting. So it's truly really not just cost of the technology itself, but cost of having that technology uh, plugged into your network and 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 providing services through it. Right. And, you know, there's other decisions organizations have to make as well. You know, what what do they want to show back? What should they be charging back? And, and what are the, 
communication strategies for those things that you're deciding to do and, and that you're not going to do. So there's, there's a lot of considerations and work that has to go behind, you know, even the approach that you're going to take to answer that second question, let alone the implementation of it. Um, and then at the end of the day, uh, all of these things are, are about improving service. So if you're going to make a decision, for example, to charge back a cost, whether it's a raw cost of, of an asset or a loaded, fully loaded cost of an asset with an uplift charge, um, there has to be a benefit to the customer and that benefit has to be improved service. So there's links between all of these things. So this is the very hard stuff. This is the, 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 the benefits and the things that need to be achieved at the bottom of the iceberg. They're very hard to get to, but you have to get there if you want to break this iceberg down and not lo no longer have it as a, a hindrance to your business. So what ends up happening is that the CIO then puts operational pressures uh, on the organization to say, you know, I, this is what I need. You need to figure out how to, how to get that information for me so that I can uh, work with my other executives and, and uh, improve business overall. Um, and that, that's regardless of whether you're a private corporation, small, medium, large, global enterprise, or a, you know, public sector. The, these questions are universal to any organizations that have an IT department running as a, you know, with a goal of running as a business. So these operational expectations, you know, this, this really does cross a number of different practices. And I'll, I'll let Pierre talk a little bit about the operational uh, things and how these tie to data. Yeah, it, often what happens is, you know, the, the CIOs will think about those three questions that we've talked about and, and their attempt to convey that information down to more the, the technical level or more the, the operational, uh, operational side of, of the business. They will translate that into, you know, in questions like what do we own and where is it and how it's being used and who is using it, how is it being managed and so on. All of that because they are trying to get the value out of the information that's being you know managed so that they can make business decisions. So the operational expectations are often what we initiate our our asset management um, projects with. You know this is the information we are trying to capture so that we can then you know answer those other questions. Great. So this is also hard, you know, uh, because we're talking about data and people, human resources and systems that exist across teams. And so it's not easy. You're not working within a bubble and saying, I can get all of this information from one single source. So it's difficult because uh, we're really talking about uh, collaboration and learning how to work together, learning how to formalize processes and procedures across multiple uh, groups. Uh, this is not easy. Uh, to do, but um, you know, one of the other things that happens that we've seen over the hundreds of projects that we've been involved in is when you start to uh, want to answer questions, tactical questions like what do we own and where is it, there's a natural uh, link uh, in the struggle to answer these questions to really say what, what tools are out there that can help me. Uh, and you know, obviously tools can't help you answer those questions, they can help you manage things. Um, they can help you answer questions once you have data, um, but technology, and specifically IT asset management technology itself within isolation will only, you know, get you so far. So when you have operational teams that then look to technology as a solution, uh, this becomes a real struggle because IT wants to meet the business needs, wants to answer questions that the CIO is requiring, but they're struggling to do that again. And the reason that this is a, is a challenge is that tools um, have a very specific and critical function. Uh, they help customers interact with data. That could be a, a service management portal, for example, that gives you access to uh, the asset management catalog. Um, also, this is not just about asset management. It's also about IT cost management, aka IT financial management. So that is, you know, what, what, am, what have I paid for? What is the service charge related to that particular asset I want to request to be uh, provided to a particular user or a particular training room, those types of things. So it's definitely beyond asset management. But that interaction, that customer interaction with all of that data, the back-end management of that data that you're bringing into a central repository, you know, bringing in from disparate systems, that ability to report out, 
that information, whether it's uh, via a reporting console or via reports that are delivered to a particular desktop, the integration of workflow, of approval processes, application integration, those are absolutely necessary and required, must have. But the challenge is you cannot answer uh, all of the questions. There are some questions that you absolutely can't answer with the, the asset management tools. You know, the basic information of, you know, ITAM is working with assignment information to say, yes, this person owns it and this is where it should be potentially by assignment um, and being able to manage that data. Uh, but that's a limited set. And as you can see, we're not even touching uh, the questions that the CIO was wanting to answer when we look at just the ITAM tool alone. Pierre, any other comments on this particular? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, when we first put this slide together and we're saying that, you know, it, it's hard to do asset management and you, you'll ask uh, many of the vendors out there and they're, they're going to say, well, it, you know, doing asset management isn't all that hard. All you're doing is, you know, managing some data and capturing some data points. So from the technical point of view, you're right, it, it isn't difficult. I mean, databases exist forever and there are database applications out there that manage data. So that part, you know, it, it, it's really really looking at the tools available that you know fit more your organization's style or your organization's decision or technology decisions. What truly does become challenging and difficult is to make it all work for you. So that you know, as Susan said, you know, taking the data and making sure that you're you have all the proper relationships that ensure that the data is complete, that the data is accurate, and that you can actually rely on it. So then you can start thinking more about, okay, how do I answer those business questions? Because ultimately, IT asset management is about answering business questions. It's not so much about keeping track of data. I mean, there is that component to it, but definitely uh, you know, answering the business questions is really where you're going to see the benefit and also be able to measure whether you have success or not. Okay, great. So just to, to build on this, um, you know, you can see the X's are starting to, to build up, and th this is really due to the, the critical point that we're, we're trying to reinforce here is that, uh, you know, ITAM and technology, critical, critical, critical um, business practices that need to be established. But in order to go down to the very hard stuff and to be able to solve the very hard questions, there's, there's more than one critical IT business practice. So uh, ITAM is, you know, in terms of definition and what's, what the market understands ITAM to be, it's life cycle management of all of your software and hardware assets. Um, you add to that contract management, which has to comprehend more than expiry dates of leases or lease schedules, warranty information. It has to also understand other terms and conditions within the contracts that pr provide a, or uh, produce a, a liability or a regulatory condition that needs to be managed as well. Also, how do you optimize what you're spending with a vendor under a contract? Um, that's another factor of how ITAM and contract management work together. So it's definitely beyond terms and conditions. And then, you know, we ha specifically have not put IT financial management on here uh, because IT financial management uh, serves uh, the function of, of providing the the finance data as a feed into IT cost management, and IT cost management considers much more than the financial data. There were other factors, you know, where costs come from, how rates are set, how all of that is, is managed uh, is really a bigger component than just IT financial management. Um, IT service management is, again, not just talking about the help desk and the, uh, the portal. Those things are huge. Um, it goes much broader in terms of uh, the service catalog, uh, from an IT holistic perspective, not just from what's available uh, to purchase through through the portal. And then obviously from a, a discovery data usage information validating um, through discovered data, configuration management data as well. Uh, these are all critical and at, at the end of the day, an organization that can bring all of these package uh, practices together, uh, working together, maturing together, eventually you can achieve IT as a service and one of the things, you know, not everybody understands thoroughly is that IT as a service is not about technology. It's about business. It's about the business practice of IT. And these are the components that feed into it. So, uh, you know, again, if we can begin to have the conversation uh, with uh, executive management, with the, you know, individuals and teams and with your, your peers, if you are at the executive level, 
in terms of your strategic plan, it's important to understand the entire iceberg and, again, focus on the business needs when we're talking about funding, and the rest of it will follow naturally if you're driving from, from the business needs up. Uh, so we, we'll move on to the next step up here. Any, any other comments there before we move forward? Just, just to basically reiterate what we've said so far is that often, you know, the idea of doing ITAM and, and introducing a stronger ITAM practice within an organization, you know, the idea starts at the, at the business level, but too often the, the projects and the initiative then shifts all the way to technology and then drives it downward. What we're saying here is that, you know, technology is important, but also remember that it has to be driven from the business need and what business requirements you are trying to answer. So it is, in this case, in this diagram, it's a bottom-up approach. Right, right, exactly. So let's let's uh, move on now to the conversation of, of shifting uh, the funding conversation. And, and I'll just add some graphics to the side here to, to crystallize that thought. Um, oh, there's one more built here I missed. So we have just one addition here in terms of ITAM being foundational, and it is. Uh, because if an organization cannot succeed at ITAM, which again, life cycle management of all of your physical and software assets, um, if you cannot succeed at that, you cannot possibly achieve IT as a service because the dependencies are even greater and the impact across the organization is even greater. So it is a critical practice that needs to be, um, needs to be established. So the next build here, if you are... Um, focusing your internal business case based on what, what you're lacking. So you're asking for tools because I need this, I, I need my ITEM tool, I need my, my uh, uh, service management portal, I need my uh, whatever it might be. Um, then what happens is that your ask internally is based on a, a, a gap in your operation operations and your uh, external requests, whether it's an RFIP or an RF, uh, RFI, excuse me, RFP, RFIQ, uh, et cetera, your focus is going to be to ask vendors what they have. Um, and so that takes you directly into limiting your view to technology and what the tools can do for you. And again, we're not saying that that's inappropriate. It's critical, but it's, it's not addressing the business needs. So if we take the question a little bit differently, and if you focus your internal business case, in terms of telling uh, leadership, this is what I'm going to do for you. I'm going to be able to answer these questions. I'm going to solve this problem. Then your uh, RFI, RFIQ, your RFP, whatever it may be, or the request for information and bids that you send out externally, will then shift to say and, and ask, what can you do? Uh, and that's more important because what can you do to help me uh, achieve this thing that I've said I'm going to do for my organization. It, it, it absolutely changes the conversation and shifts it from that bottom, from a top-down or a lateral conversation of technology to a bottom-up conversation of solving business, um, business requirements. Um, and this is all about alignment with this, the strategic goals and objectives in IT. And the next slide that we'll go to will walk you through um, how this really changes where you start and, and how you approach your information externally. So let's take that first bit in terms of shifting it. So this is what I will do in, in the internal conversation in, in terms of the business case. Whoops. Let's go back for a second. So it's really important as a, an internal uh, project sponsor that you understand the business goals of IT. Um, and not only the business goals, I'm having problems with my build here again, not only the business goals, but IT governance framework as well. So what things do you need to comply with in terms of internal uh, regulatory um, expectations and external as well? When you are, I'm just going to leave this up here because it clearly doesn't want to build the way that I want it to. When you're building your, uh, your business case and when you're uh, setting your vendor evaluation criteria, you have to ensure that your, um, your plans align with the business goals and uh, with IT governance. And when you do that, um, the funding is happening at the, at the C-level. And if you can show that alignment with business goals and IT governance, then it's easier for the decision body to say, yes, I'm going to fund that, that particular project because it does align with what we're trying to achieve as an organization. Um, at the same time, what, what it will do will help you focus 
your vendor evaluation. I have no idea why why that's doing that. Let me just. <laughs> I'm not even I'm not even touching my keyboard, Pierre. It's just bizarre. <laughs> um, it helps you with your vendor evaluation as well. So this is not a matter of saying if I'm uh, I'm only going to pick one organization and they need to be able to address everything. That doesn't exist. Um, you're going to find uh, tool vendors that do what you need to do from a technology perspective and let them do that really well. You're going to find other organizations that are focused on other aspects of providing, uh, you know, whether it's strategic planning or technical implementation. Align it with what you're trying to achieve and evaluate uh, vendors and put them in the right roles against this uh, aligned business plan with strategic IT goals. And you're going to increase your chance of receiving funding, absolutely. Whether you're a vendor working with an internal sponsor or you're an, a customer working on your internal business case, but you're also going to have a more effective strategy when you're evaluating vendors on the other side. So again, you know, our, our point here is if we shift the conversation from tools to the business uh, needs and move move forward on that basis in everything we do from the business case to vendor evaluations to even the way we implement solutions once uh, we've made decisions and we've secured funding, um, the, the rate of success ongoing is much higher. Pierre? Um, no, I think you said, uh, you said it all. I said as much as I need to say. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Okay, um, I've been working the slides, even though they were a little funny here at the end. Um, were you able to track uh, questions that we might have from, from our uh, attendees today? Um, I haven't seen any yet. No, uh, no questions so far. Okay. Okay, very good. So again, we, what we wanted to do was make sure that we keep these short. Everybody is super busy, um, including, including us, and we think 30, the approach of a 30-minute webinar uh, session uh, providing you with good tips and conversations uh, is the right way to go. We would uh, love to hear your feedback. If you are attending IAI TAM Spring Ace, uh, we will be there presenting a much deeper dive on this on the subject. Um, I think it's Track 4 Financial Stream on the 29th at 3.30. Um, and the, the title of the stream is uh, Operationalizing ITEM in Collaboration with Financial Management and Contract Management is a Game Changer, and it is. Um, for a number of different reasons. So starting point, um, definitely the concept we re reviewed with you today, and uh, we look forward to seeing you on the next webinar or at II10. That's it for me, Pierre. Okay, um, just leaving it out there for a couple of more minutes or a couple of, for a minute, if anybody has any questions from you know, what you heard today or anything uh, regarding what RAPA does or what we, uh, the projects we're involved with in terms of uh, item, um, feel free to send them along or type them in uh, through the chat window or through the questions. Okay. All right. Okay, up here, there's one uh, one question that just came in here. Um, just around the uh, the question is, um, where do I start? The most important thing is to understand your alignment with overall strategic IT objectives. Um, you know, if you if we don't understand how your particular uh, role within IT is linked to what uh, you know the the executives are trying to achieve, then it's difficult to 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 really say uh, you know I need I need extra funding to to do this or do that. That that's the number one thing. And whether you're frontline operations, literally, you could be a, a you know managing a mobile devices, um, you know. If, if IT's strategic goal is to reduce, for example, the physical inventory of all assets by, uh, you know, X amount of dollars or X percentage this year or something like that, then how can you manage your mobile devices to achieve that same objective within, within your particular working group? Um, so that's the link. So if you have a project that's going to help you uh, create more efficient efficiencies and you need to drive it from that, that linkage, and build your business case from there um, up towards the tools that you need to be able to achieve that. So that's just a really simple example. So in terms of where do you start, definitely make sure you understand the uh, the business objectives of your organization um, and the governance framework that you're required to work within. Uh, and from there, then see how that links to what you do uh, and, uh, and build your business case from there. So and just to add, 
Yeah, just to add to that, um, in, in a lot of cases and a lot of projects I've been involved with, uh, verbalizing what those those business requirements are, um, it, it was is difficult at times. And what ends up happening is, you know, the technology and operational teams are asked, you know, you know, I'm not going to tell you what you're going to what I need you to do. You should be telling me what you can do to help solve the problem. So sometimes, you know, it's it's identifying those very simple business this business uh, requirements. You know, from an operational side, and then pr pr uh, produce that or present that to management to say, okay, this is why we need to do ITAM. It's to answer these business decisions and to really approach it from that point as well. Okay, great. Uh, well, that's it. That's the only question that, uh, that I saw. So I think uh, I'll just move forward one slide here. We do have our contact information uh, as well as our Twitter handle, LinkedIn page, etc. So we'd love to hear from you, and we'll look forward to seeing you on the next uh, webinar. Thanks, Pierre. I'll talk to you later. Okay. We'll okay. talk to you soon. Bye. See you.